That was back in January. Uh, that's their only top 50 win at Ken Palm uh, mm-hmm. for Nevada. So I, I really wish Musselman, you know, when, when the Martin brothers and Jordan Caroline decided to come back and they got that five star, I mean, I, I wish he would have just gone out and played a more national uh, schedule, but he didn't. And, you know, they may pay for it. Uh, in terms of their seeding, especially if they don't get a win in this spot. So very important for Utah State to get a win to, uh, you know, give them a really – that will put them with a really good shot at net mm-hmm. large. It's really important for Nevada because they need to keep their seed up. I mean, I, even if Nevada wins out and wins the Mountain West Conference, I mean, I don't know that they get higher than – I mean, I think four is the best-case scenario for them. And if they were to lose this game – and, you know, lose in the Mountain West Conference Tournament, even if it is in the finals to Utah State. I mean, they could maybe fall to a 7 or even an 8-9 game and be looking at a 1 seed if they advance. So, uh, very important game for both teams, no doubt. Wow, I didn't even think that they would fall that far. Um, very possible, though, you're right, that schedule, that three losses and not not playing any top 50 teams, but like you said, one, I think, and uh, that's not good at all. You know, Utah State, Another bubble team, you know, and uh, they have. I think. I think if you're going to look at it, you know, at least, at least Nevada knows they're in. Utah right. State's playing to get in. I almost give that little bit of an a, an edge for that. Uh, the Aggies are nine and four against the spread at home. The Wolfpack is a monster seven and three on the road. So both these teams have been winning tickets for people. Uh, looking at the splits, you see that Nevada is a much better team at home, though, than they are on the road. Uh, they give up about 10 more points per game um, on the road, and they score about three points less on the road. You saw a little bit of that if you saw the San Diego State game. I did watch that game. San Diego State won. Uh, Utah State's a, a much better team at home. They score about six more points per game at home, give up actually eight less. So there, those are some pretty big splits, but... Um, you know, going by the splits, I, I guess you in nothing else, Utah State wins 76 to 70. But it's harder to do this because, you know, Nevada has such a bad schedule. They're almost like Alabama was in football. You know, they turn off the gas at the end. You wonder what they would really do. Just like you said, it's a big question mark. Like, what? Well, how good is this team playing a bunch of, you know, tomato cans? Because, you know, they could probably average about five more points a game if they really tried. You know, that's why I can't go by the splits as much. The teams met earlier this year, and that's when uh, the Aggies weren't as good. The Aggies got blown out by 23 points. You know, the biggest factor to me is that, uh, you know, for for Nevada, the Utah State's playing for re- revenge, and they're at home, and they're trying to get that big ticket, like you said, in the NCAA tournament. So Nevada's most likely in anyways, but it's still a meaningful game because they'll be tied for the conference if they lose this too. They're not just going to lose that seed, you said. They're going to be tied for the conference. I, I give a slight edge in motivation to the Aggies, but you know, being that these teams blow out their opponents in conference, I think the tempo numbers are off. I think the tempos may be a little bit small. Because they, they slow it down at the end. The adjusted tempo doesn't take out for garbage time. Um, it only takes out for the average team when you look at like Ken Palm and Torvik. Last year, this game went to 180. So you're going to look at about 143 total. And I know I sound pretty public here, but I'm probably going to take that that uh, that total there. I think I'm going to take it over. This is a big game for both both teams. Yeah, no doubt. I, you know, I'd love to see Nevada favored by, you know, Four or five, I don't think it'll happen. I, I would take it as a home dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I, I think it's a toss-up game. Pick them um, uh, to me, but I, I would love to see Utah State catching some points, and I'd probably play them. I would too, my man. I would too. But like you said, I had a plus one. You had pick them. I think uh, it's going to hover around there for a while. Maybe we get a shot at the very end at over three. We'll see. We'll see what the public takes that one. Right. Um, next game, Michigan State. Versus Indiana, we're going into my realm, the Big Ten. I have Indiana dogs by eight, over-unders at about 134. Uh, lots of weird things in this game. What are your thoughts, my man? I'm thinking Sparty uh, minus six and a half-ish. Um, they're, they're hot, man. And, and it, you, know, you mentioned, uh, you know, 
Texas without Kerwin Roach and this team, you know, hopefully they're going to get Nick Ward back uh, in a week or so. But uh, Langford out, I mean, that's two guys averaging north of 15 points per game is uh, a testament to to Tom Izzo. And his teams always seem to start gelling right Mm -hmm. now. And, uh, you know, I went against them uh, the other day, Sunday, and obviously took an L uh, as they, they were just outstanding uh, particularly in the second half, and and you know obviously going into your, into your place and winning at Wisconsin a, a couple of weeks ago, they they drill Ohio State and Minnesota, and uh, I actually had gone against them with Rutgers, and I did get a cover there, but uh, that was a fifteen and a half point number, and they won by eleven. And, and Rutgers played a little pretty feisty here, uh, but uh, you know uh, they've just been. They've just been bad this year, and um, they uh, they got a nice win uh, over Wisconsin. They gave Iowa a lot of trouble. They've, they've covered three in a row, but uh, they were one and six against the spread the, the seven previous uh, games. I look for Michigan State to win this game, uh, but I mean I could see it being a, you know potentially a close game um, unless Michigan State is a short favorite. And, and when I say short, I'm thinking you know four or fewer. Uh, that would be the only way I'd play Sparty. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't even know that I would even want to get on IU if they were catching eight or nine. I, I, I I'm just not into uh, going against Tom Izzo, and the calendar will have hit March by then. That's right, and uh, I get it, man. Um, home dog alert, and this is a smelly, smelly dog with Indiana, right? Um, weird game because Michigan State celebrated pretty hard in their locker room. When they beat Michigan, it's like it's almost like they they celebrate like that if they clinch the division in the Big Ten, but they're not. They're tied, you know. Um, and so I'm like, what are you celebrating like that for? Uh, a huge letdown spot it, it creates when that happens. But uh, you know, Michigan State lost that one game to the Hoosiers at home this year, right? And so you ask if they're looking for revenge, but that was a three game skid they have, or you you wonder if they even care. So that's what's so weird about it. Um, no Big Ten teams better than uh, Sparty against the spread as an away team. They're eight and three, and they're twenty and eight overall. One of the best against the spread records in college basketball. Indiana's a dismal eleven and sixteen against the spread. They had a terrible conference. The scary thing is that Indiana is, thinks they're a bubble team. Um, you know they had some big wins, Louisville, um, Marquette this year. You know, they if they actually they beat Wisconsin, if they beat State here, they might be back in the bubble. You know, even with even with such a bad record, so um, they know they can beat them. Um, they're they're three and zero against the spread the last three games. The Hoosiers are so I am just uh, it's hard to bet Michigan State here. But um, how do you fade them? You you can't. You know how good they are. You, when they lost Josh Langford, I tried to fade him. Got I lost. I, when I lost Nick Ward, just like you did on Sunday, I was on Michigan. I lost. You know I'm like, what what the hell is going to stop this team? You know that Cassius Winston just steps up when he has to and he takes over. You know, um, do the spot in the in the in the injuries finally they, could they they might finally catch up with State. I don't know, but I, I think in, I'm thinking under in this game, you know, and, and I think it is because I, Juwan Howard and Devonte Green's going to have their, um, hands full against Xavier Tillman and, uh, Kenny Goins and Aaron's. I, I think Michigan stays just loaded with big guys, good ones, athletic ones. Um, and so I, I just don't see a ton of points being scored. And, uh, you know, that under should have hit when they played Wisconsin. It didn't, it went overtime. That's the only reason the under should have hit against Iowa. And they didn't because it went to double overtime. So um, Indiana is actually not that good at scoring, but their defense is decent. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna play under 134. I think that's the only way to look at it. Any thoughts on that? Well, um, you know, prior to the you know the overtime games uh, here recently, you know, they had a 48 to 46 game. Uh, couple games before that, they had a 55 52 game. Uh, you know, Michigan State is buckling down on, on defense uh, this time of year. Uh, prior to Michigan scoring 70, you know, they held Rutgers to 60, Ohio State to 44, Wisconsin to 59, Minnesota to 55. So um, no no argument against that. Uh, certainly not, I, I uh, you know, 
when I think Tom Izzo, I, I, under would be the way I'm thinking uh, if thinking about a total. Yeah, absolutely, because this could be just a complete shutdown defensive game. And you know that uh, Michigan's going to step up their defense. Michigan State will against this Indiana team, especially because they lost that last game. So I, I, I'm loving the under on this one. Let's move into back into SEC country. This might be the game of the weekend. Kentucky versus Tennessee. Tennessee is laying about three to four points. And I thought it might be three, but with that injury to Reed Travis, it might be four. I got the total at about 145. Man, this one's right up your alley. I, 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 I'm going to let you go first. Uh, you're you're thinking that number uh, Kentucky being favored, right? Um, I'm thinking I actually Ken Palm has Tennessee favored by three. So does Torvik. So I'm okay. Think- no, I have Tennessee favored too. I just I didn't want to, I didn't wasn't sure if you were um if you were thinking Kentucky favored there. I, I wrote down minus two and a half or three for Tennessee. I, they're unbeaten at home. Uh, they're only six eight and one against the spread, but a lot of those were big. Numbers now they failed to cover in five in a row, but um, huge revenge game. I mean, they really got embarrassed at Rupp, uh, but I don't, you know, I don't think that uh, that anybody was going to win it at Rupp that night. So I, I think Tennessee in bounce back mode here uh, is where to look. I mean, I hope they're a home dog, but uh, I, I think they'll be a short favorite. Um, the under is ten and five uh, for the Vols at home. Uh, Kentucky's hot though, man. They're, they're really hot, but they will not have the Rupp crowd with them, uh, this week. And I think Thompson Bowling is going to be an electric atmosphere, uh, on Saturday. I, I think Tennessee's going to win this game. I'd love to gobble up a couple of points, uh, as a home dog, but I don't, I don't know that we'll get that opportunity. I know, man. What a, what a interesting spot here. Um, you know, it's one of those games. It's the only re- I, I I I won the over on this, but the only reason it went over is because Tennessee went into foul city, even though they lost. You know, they're fouling the hell out of ten- uh, Kentucky, and that game probably should have went under. Um, and now you're looking at one forty five. It, it, it makes you think: Is like, is Kentucky gonna? If they start losing bad, are they even gonna put a full effort in? They don't need this win. You know, they really don't that bad. Um, they're going to be a great seed anyway, Yeah, in my opinion. Tennessee's pissed off. K- Kentucky took them out. They took them out of the number one ranking in the AP, right? Um, yep. you, you know, when healthy, Kentucky wins this game, I think. You know, and some people faded Kentucky when they lost Reed Travis, and uh, they destroyed Auburn, blew them out by 27 points, right? Even without yep. that, w- w- it, it, Hero was playing, you know. Williams, they're just they're just stacked, and uh, you know they. You can tell that they were losing to Arkansas. They're kind of looking ahead to this game. Then they ended up beating Arkansas at the end that last game. The question is, um, how is Tennessee going to be looking for revenge? How bad are they going to be? How how motivated they're going to be? I think Tennessee is going to be extremely motivated, um, but they still haven't beaten a top twenty five team. You know that's the thing. You know they still. Have it, not since December, not since that Gonzaga game, December 9th, right? And um, that LSU game that Tennessee played, and they had an opportunity to, and they lost, and they got their butt kicked against Kentucky. You know, Tennessee is a ranking, I think they rank first in all shooting categories in the SEC, like uh, effective field goal percentage, two point percentage, and uh, in most of the categories, and as well as adjusted offense. So um, you know that they they have the offense, but um, you know Ken, Kentucky had the big rebounding against uh, against Tennessee, but without Reed Travis, can they do that? I don't know. Everything I say is leaning to Tennessee, but when Kentucky goes into this game as a dog, that's disrespect to them. You know they're going to know they're going in as a dog after they blew this team out, and I I don't like them going. In, I don't like fading Kentucky going in as a dog. I have a slight lean to Tennessee here, but I don't have any other play, my man. So I think you, you're completely right here. If we can catch Kent Tennessee as a dog, that's the only way I can look at this game. Well, yeah, I, I, I agree. No doubt. Let's get into the last game that we are going to talk about here real quick. Michigan versus Maryland. 
Maryland's about a one point dog over unders one twenty nine on Sunday the third. One of the key games for Sunday here. 